uh, unit number three. So if you can uh, read unit number three to get yourself oriented, and then we're going to talk about it. That's one strange arrow. Anyway, <clears throat> okay, so uh, looking at this question. So I just want to remind you, just in case you didn't remember, interstitial. Um, interstitial means uh, it's the same thing as extracellular. Okay, so basically, fluid could be in three locations in your body, more or less. Fluid can be in your cells, that is intracellular. Uh, fluid can be in your blood vessels. That's intravascular. And fluid can be outside of your blood vessels and outside of the inside of your cells. So that whole area of your body um, is, uh, you know, the grab bag uh, expressions to talk about those locations is interstitial, which is certainly extracellular. And uh, it's between cells as well, so that's intercellular. Um, and uh, this is often called uh, third space. In medicine, it's called the third space, and uh, people uh, t uh, talk about it openly um, using, using that expression, third space, more than uh, the other expressions uh, for it. So in this, uh, you know, in the passage, it sort of explains the, the normal way that these things um, are working. And it, it says that transport of sodium uh, occurs um, more rapidly and actively. Actively means active transport, meaning that it requires ATP. It requires energy, and uh, and and it goes from the lumen into the uh, interstitial fluid. So um, this is uh, the lumen on the outside uh, here, and it's going into the fluid. So let me just write that down out here. So, uh, so you have active transport that is going um, uh, through the intestinal wall, and uh, so, and then, and then Acer very politely defines what diarrhea is. Uh, so, increased fluidity and frequency of fecal movement. So, um, in the uh, in the first question, uh, I just um, I'll also just put here. Uh, to make sure that you understand the idea of osmosis um, across a semi-permeable membrane. So I'm going to put an X over here, X here. Okay, so this is a semi-permeable membrane, and that means that it is uh, a membrane that only permits certain things to cross. Now, the reason you you have a semi-permeable membrane is uh, to make sure that um, uh, it's to uh, give the uh, understanding or to imitate what the plasma membrane can do. So, um, because the plasma membrane is itself uh, a semi-permeable membrane. Uh, for example, there are certain things that can cross easily, like water or things that are uncharged or fatty uh, can cross the membrane pretty easily. But then things that are charged uh, or very, very big um, have uh, great difficulty crossing the membrane. So it's a semi-permeable membrane. And because of that, there are there are usually on an ACER exam some questions uh, about semi-permeable membranes to see, um, uh, uh, to compare um, so that you understand clearly what osmosis is and diffusion. Okay, so if we have uh, water here, okay, and I want you to keep in mind, diffusion is, like we said before, is when things go from high concentration to low concentration. That's what all diffusion is, high to low concentration. and so. Um, normally, if X could um, diffuse freely, then and if we have twice as much X on one side, actually, uh, just to make it simpler for you to uh, conceive, so if we had X like this, um, then nature would make it so that X would spread out evenly and X would go on to the other side. But if you have a semi-permeable membrane that does not permit X, to go to the other side. 
then if this is all in water, and if water is permitted to go onto the other side, then what side will water have a tendency to want to move towards? The left side or the right side? Which side would water have the tendency to want to move towards? Left or right? Yes. Water will want to diffuse to the right side because that is where water, because there's more X there, that means there's less water there. And so water is going to want to diffuse to the right side. This is called osmosis. It's the diffusion of water. And if you had a membrane that can uh, detect pressure uh, to see how much pressure or drive there is for water to go to the other side, that is what is called osmotic pressure. So water will want to diffuse. And X, uh, well, X is not water here. <laughs> okay, X is something other than water. But of course, if X was water, water would want to go to, to the other side, um, uh, to the left side, if X was water. Because things want to diffuse uh, such that they spread across. It's part of uh, entropy, where things uh, want to um, uh, to be as random as possible and not organized in one corner. They want to be uh, randomly displaced. Okay, so uh, so that is the movement across. A, a, remember, and remember that water is a solvent. I'll also uh, remind you of, of that little um, fact that a solution is equal to a solvent um, plus a solute. So the solute is that thing in smaller quantity. So if you add sugar to water, the sugar is the solute. And uh, solvent is, is uh, that uh, part of matter which is in greater quantity, so the water. And then together it forms a solution, salt water, sugar water, or, or whatever. So um, those are, we'll clear that up. So now, question number nine. Which of the following uh, best describes relative situation when there's a net movement of water across a semi-permeable membrane. So if you have a, so before you even look at the answers, if you have um, uh, water going across a semi-permeable membrane from one side to another, like in the example, um, if if it has, it means it means just like what we have here. I, I didn't intend to set it up this way, but this is indeed side one, <laughs> side one, and uh, the other side is uh, is is side two. And and so as you can see, on side two, you have a more, you have greater solute concentration, which is the X, and that means on side. One, you have lower solute concentration. So you look at the answers with lower solute concentration. Well, there's only one possibility, side A. And um, as we said before, on side one, we have higher solvent concentration, meaning water concentration. And side two, we have lower water concentration. And that's why water is trying to go from high to low over to the right side. So the answer for question nine is C, is C, because of lower solute concentration is on side one, right? Because we only have one X on side one. OK, so now uh, we're going to move to uh, question 10. So which of the following represents mechanism would lead to uh, diarrhea? So, you know, Acer said, <laughs> you know, uh, that diarrhea, I, I, I diarrhea, defined diarrhea for us, but I think, uh, you know, um, pretty much any human being can define it. And so there's, there's more water in the lumen. And this is the issue. So there's more water in the lumen. Now, how do you get more water in the lumen? They just showed us how. It's side two. If you have more solute on the other side, then you will have, see here we have more solute on this side, then we'll have water rushing in here by osmosis, then you have more water there. So we want more water in the lumen. To get more water in the lumen, here are our options. 
we can make more Cl minus come into the lumen. That will make more water in the lumen, resulting in diarrhea. Or we can block sodium going into the cells. If we block sodium, then more sodium remains in the lumen. Therefore, uh, there's uh, more solute concentration, and therefore, water will come in here by osmosis. So those are the options that we have in our minds before we even look at the possible questions, uh, uh, answer choices. Then they tell us uh, what means inhibited and what means stimulated. OK. And uh, then in looking at the uh, possible answer choices, um, I'm looking for something that stimulates Cl minus into the lumen. Uh, and I'm looking for it, but I don't see it. In fact, if you look at uh, answer choice A, it is not stimulating Cl minus into the lumen. It is inhibiting it, according to ACER's um, you know, uh, marks that they put there. And so we don't have anything that is stimulating Cl minus into the lumen. So now I'm going to look for this. Is there anything that's blocking sodium from coming into the cells, and therefore more sodium remains in the lumen, therefore osmosis? And answer choice B has that. Answer choice B is showing you blocking sodium entering the cells. And so yes, answer choice uh, B is correct. OK. So uh, keeping all of that in mind, looking at question uh, 11, of the following, which uh, diarrhea-causing organisms would likely, most likely act by? And so one of the, the first thing it says is inhibiting osmosis via crypt cells. We don't want osmosis. I mean, I mean, this organism creating diarrhea does not want osmosis to be stopped. It is uh, actually stimulating something to create more osmosis. It's doing something to create uh, more water into the lumen. So answer choice A is incorrect. Answer choice B, blocking the sodium pumps of villa cells. Hey. Is, isn't that uh, exactly what question 10 was? <laughs> question 10 was showing you that sodium is being blocked uh, from entering uh, the cells. And we already know from the passage that this is being done actively. And actively means uh, that some sort of ATP requiring pump is used. So we call that an ATPase. And the most common one is the sodium potassium ATPase which is a, a pump that takes, uses energy in order to um, pump ions against their concentration gradient. So blocking this pump is exactly uh, what is symbolized in question 10b. And therefore, now we're seeing it in words in question 11b. And so uh, 11b is definitely uh, the correct answer. And this is, is not uncommon, as I mentioned before, on the, even for the real exam for you to have a, a question uh, that to get it right, it helps that you got the previous question or questions correct. And um, for, the, uh, for the new book, this is uh, covered in Biology 1.1 and 7.6.